How's it going, everybody? This is Echo Papa, and today we're going to talk about Virtual DJ 8 and keyboard shortcuts. Now, there's some pretty cool ones in here uh, that we're going to go over. Um, now, I know a lot of you don't really use the keyboard very much. Uh, most people, a lot of people have controllers, but there are some people who do use uh, the keyboard a lot, and uh, there's some cool commands in here. I know, like me, I use a controller. However, a lot of times I will use the keyboard as a sampler. And also, if you're going into a situation like a club where you're using time code, the turntables and your mixture and stuff is already there. You just bring your own time code, your own laptop. So it can be handy to use the keyboard uh, for some of the, the commands versus bringing in another controller uh, to try and fit into the DJ booth. Today we're going to go over the default shortcuts that are built into the factory map, and plus we're going to show you how to build your own. So let's get started. The first, the most important button to me is the tab. And that's this one right here. Uh, the, the tab key, what it does is it jumps back and forth between deck A and deck B. Because the one thing that you have to know about this map is the, uh, the factory map, uh, it essentially lets you control one deck at a time. So uh, while there are some things that are universal to both sides, um, typically you either select deck A or deck B and uh, you're controlling whichever deck you have selected that's the deck that you're going to use. So tab is very important. So once you have the deck selected that you're going to work on, the main ones that you're going to use uh, is spacebar. Uh, spacebar right here is going to let you play and pause. So it acts essentially like a play pause button. Uh, the other one is P. However, P also acts like a, a play and pause button. Although spacebar is right there, so it just spacebar feels more natural. But one of the cool things about the, the P button is that on top of acting like a play pause button, is that it can also act, you hold down the shift key with the P, it can also act like a play while pressed. As soon as you let it go, it stops. Uh, the next one is the Q button. And the Q button is when you're, you're playing, you can set a Q point. Uh, also, you can test and, and see where you're at, just like the, the Q button up here. Next is the, the stop button. Now, if you're playing, stop is obviously going to stop it. But let's go over to this deck right here. We're going to tab over to deck B, where we have a bunch of Q points set up. And you can see when you uh, press the S button, now uh, stop also jumps between the different cue points, which can be very handy if you want to jump uh, from one cue point to another. So let's go back to the spacebar really quick. So we know it plays in pause, but there's some other stuff it can do too. If you hold down the shift button and you, you press the spacebar, it acts like a sync, and it, it syncs the two decks. But it doesn't play it, it just hits the, the sync control. Uh, the other one is for auto mix. You can turn auto mix on and off. Uh, If we hit it right there, now you see that our auto mix is turned on, and you hit Control Spacebar to turn it off again. The other thing you can do, uh, as well as as auto mix, is you can make it, you can force it to mix. Like for example, uh, let's go ahead and go back to our auto mix mode. If you hit Alt and Spacebar, it's going to jump right into your next song. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the hot cues. So uh, let's go, let's stay on deck B here, and we're going to look at the hot cues. The hot cue buttons are going to be your number buttons, and what we're going to do with those is to make them play. You actually want to press, uh, hold down the Alt button, and then you're going to want to hit your hot cue. So let's go ahead and we'll, we're going to play our track. Here, press our hot cue. Hold down the Alt button. So with that, we can activate our hot cues. Remember for the Alt button, the space bar plays your track, so the Alt is going to also play your track, because just pressing the buttons by themselves is actually going to do something different. We're going to go over that next. Um, now to set a hot cue, uh, let's, we'll jump over here to a new point. Let's say we're at this point in our song, we don't have a hot cue, so we're going to go ahead and set it. Instead of hitting Alt, we're going to come over here to Control. We'll hit, we'll see, 4. And then now we just set a new hot cue in position 4. 
Now the number keys, when we're not using them as hot cues, when you just press them without pressing the Alt and the Control, they're actually going to function as a loop. They're going to be auto loops. Number one is going to be a one beat loop. Two, two beat loop. Three does nothing. Four is a four beat loop. Five is an eight beat loop. Six is a 16 beat loop. And seven is a 32 beat loop. Eight and nine, they do some other stuff. So, so let's go ahead and uh, let's play our track. So we'll start off with a four with a four beat loop. So with one button press, we now have our four beat loop. With uh, eight and nine, what we can do is we can half our loop. We can we can go down pretty far. With nine, we can double it up. And to get out of our loop, you press escape, and it turns your loop off. So let's turn this, this on. Uh, the other one that you can do is if you press escape, is you press zero, zero is going to reloop. And then escape, get back out of it. Also, if you just want to turn your loop back on, you can press the escape button, and it will it will turn the loop back on for you. So that's the auto loops. Next thing we're going to talk about is mixing. We can mix with the keyboard. Uh, first we'll start off with nudge. Uh, nudge is your keys right here. And to nudge on the keyboard, we're actually going to use the, the left arrow and the right arrow. So if we play our track, we can use this to slow, speed up our track or slow it down just a little bit, just to kind of help us mix. You can also use uh, the shift key and do the same thing. And it just changes it at a different increment versus uh, the, the standard increment. We can also pitch and tr we can also pitch our track up and down. We're going to use the plus and minus keys over here. Minus obviously minus obviously slows us down. Plus uh, speeds us up. If you can go in different increments, also for that you can kind of fine tune it a little bit because it does make kind of a big jump. So if you hit the uh, control button, or you can use the shift button, so you can fine tune it to your liking. You can do big jumps, you can do little jumps. Uh, if you need to reset it, in the case right now, we're, we're off on our thing. If you, hit the, uh, if you hit the asterisk button, it jumps right back to the default pitch that it was started at. So now that we have our pitched and we're ready to mix, we can control our crossfader. Now our crossfader isn't controlled with, with these as uh, uh, some people might think. It's actually controlled with your uh, page up and page down. So let's go ahead. We're going to play both tracks. We have both of them playing right now. What we're going to do is we're going to use these over here. Now for mine, it's a little bit backwards. Normally page up and page down, they're above one another, but in uh, my particular keyboard, they happen to be left and right. And uh, just because my keyboard, you know, it's on a laptop and so it's smaller. But for me, it's backwards. Um, so this would be something, if uh, I use this, I would want to reprogram this. But um, we can, I can use that to cross fade from left to right. On top of doing a nudged crossfade, we can also make it do a hard crossfade where it just jumps over really fast. So let's go ahead and we're going to play our tracks again. If we hold down the control button, we can... Then we can make it do a hard crossfade left and right. Next thing we're going to talk about is a sampler. Uh, we've got our sampler window opened up. and we have our function buttons. Our function buttons up here are F buttons. They're going to correlate to whatever the sampler is. So if you want to fire off, say, pad number three, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hit uh, button number three. Now, it functions in two different ways. If you just press it, it'll start and stop. So let's go ahead and we'll just press it. Uh, yeah. And if we press it and hit it before it ends, uh, 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 it just stops it. But if we hold down the shift button and, and do it, it's... Uh, 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 then it only plays while we press have the button pressed down. There's a few other keyboard shortcuts that come in pretty handy. They're not necessarily performance oriented like some of the other ones are. And the first one that we're going to go over is Control V. And then what that does is it opens up the video window and closes it again. Uh, the next one is Control F. If you hit Control and F, it's going to jump right over here to our our window so that we can select whatever it is we want to select. 
Next. Next one, if we come down to our browser, and this one isn't really a keyboard shortcut. This is just something that is uh, kind of generic to Windows, but it's definitely helpful to notice. If you press Control A, you can select everything that is in that window. Another one that's pretty handy is if you were to select multiple, um, if you select uh, a folder, like let's select this one right here, and then we go over here and we select a different folder. If you hold down the control button and then you hit the backspace button, you can jump back and forth between those two folders. So now that we've gone over some of the really useful keyboard shortcuts, next let's uh, talk about making our own. And uh, a lot of my favorite shortcuts that I use are ones that I've made myself. Uh, so I'll go over here to settings and you want to be in controllers. Next, select your keyboard, and then the uh, best way to do it is just press Key Learn. Click on Key Learn, and then just press the one that you want to do. Uh, one that I like to use is uh, R. I'll select R because R is not one that's, that's uh, used, and it's blank, and I can put something in there. And uh, so I'm going to put in uh, Record. I think it's there. So that way it'll start a recording session. So if I press R, I can just start recording right away. Pretty well everything you can map in, into a keyboard button, uh, just like you would into a custom button. So if you find out something really cool and you would like to put it into a keyboard button versus putting it into a custom button, you can do that. So the possibilities are, are really endless. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with with uh, mapping of the keyboard. Now we've covered a lot of shortcuts and it can be a lot to digest. So I made a cheat sheet for some of the default shortcuts in Virtual DJ 8. You're welcome to download it for free and I'll put the links in the comments below. If you pull it from one of my social media sites, if you guys want to give me a like or a follow, that's always appreciated. Uh, it's not a requirement. For me, it's more important that if you need a cheat sheet that you're able to get your hands on it. So I hope that's helped you guys out. If you guys want to get a hold of me, you can find me on Twitter at DJ Echo Papa. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you really liked it, share it with your friends. Or better yet, subscribe. Until next time, I'm Echo Papa, and I will talk to you later.